I also know for a fact that uh, one woman that I did approach from uh, from breakfast television wouldn't appear publicly, but did privately support the net neutrality campaign. Um, so you're looking there at people that are owned by a lot of the media that um, are controlling the internet as well. So there may be personal issues why they're not publicly speaking here tonight. There's also the aspect that this is meant to be an open environment, so we are accepting as many people as we can, which is probably why you've got what you've got right now as well. So as, as the groups widen, as, the more, as there are more participants and more people accepting the ideology that we currently have, uh, I think those barriers are going to start coming down and we're going to you know, have less distinctions in groups as a result. The nonpartisan way has to be the way going forward if we want this to succeed. No, I, I stepped out, so I probably shouldn't. But I, I was just going to say, like, you know, I, I think it is a tactics issue in the same way that Mark talks about it. It is worth saying that the only tactic that will work on this is to make it a nonpartisan issue. And so you actually need to be pretty conscious and deliberate about that. Yeah, totally. I'm, I'm convinced I'll retract my comment earlier about uh, net neutrality being a class issue. Does that help? <laughs> no, keep it. Keep that one. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to try to get to everybody. I'm trying to remember where the hands were. And everybody's got their hand up now. Um, Andrew Clement from uh, Professor University of Toronto. Thank you. Um, I have uh, two, two points to address uh, a number of the um, uh, issues that are being raised. And I'm still academic, so you need to cut me off, perhaps. If I don't. Um, uh, first of all, conceptualizing the, the internet, um, you've heard it compared to a sidewalk and to the education system. Um, I think there's a, a, a germ of a good idea there, which is that it, this is public infrastructure. But it's like, since it's so multifaceted, since we use it for entertainment, for communication, <coughs> for, for pol politicking, for organizing ourselves, it is much broader than any of those individual ones. But if we think about it as public infrastructure that we depend on, a, on it in terms of our daily lives, then we can think about how that needs to be managed. Not to say that there are no rules, but the rules need to be very fair and open. And putting it in the hands of, of one or two uh, uh, organizations that are not open and accountable is a disaster from a democratic point of view of how we create public infrastructure. So that's sort of point number one. The second one, a point about strategy, um, is to think of this very, very broadly as you just raised. Um, there is no group who is against net neutrality in conceived in this way as a fair and open adjudication of our, our infrastructure, other than the, than the duopoly that will uh, be threatened by its, by its loss. So in terms of a broad political strategy, Every group and every individual, in a way, should be a supporter, um, whether it's for the things that we've described, we've, we've heard here, or for many of the other um, activities that are done over the internet. To leave that in the hands of unaccountable organizations is against everybody's interest, even large organizations, even large corporations. So I think there is a basis for a very broad um, political uh, movement here. In the United States, they have gone much further than that. They have had a very wide spe spectrum of support um, for net neutrality provisions in the US Congress, all the way from the far right to the far left, and lots in between. And Canada is a bit behind in this, but I think the basis for a similar kind of broad strategy um, is here. So I hope we can do it. This is a very good start. Thank you. Thanks. down for a week mm -hmm. and see what happens. And she reaches thousands of people who are young in Toronto, Toronto-centric. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I feel like the younger audience are very passionate about trendy topics. You know, one day it might be like um, AIDS or 
dark for or whatever it is. As long as you get them passionate and get them where they're paying attention, then they'll listen up and they'll act. Um, but, you know, we shouldn't corner issues like this into a small tech or policy maker environment if it's important and everybody uses the internet, everybody loves the internet, and so you need to use the internet to let them know what's going on in the language and in the forms of the media that they're paying attention to. So how do we make it sexy? Facebook groups, yeah. um, slogans, like have like a party even, like, yeah. you know, like Y2K, like scare people. Like, you know. Now you have us on board, and so now you've got everybody who's paying attention to us. So from the, start from there, we'll make it viral. We're going to have an internet dance party in Vancouver June 20th. So that yeah, I saw that. Fly me over. <laughs> Perhaps you can all donate to their flight. As far as the, uh, the keep it kind of like in your face a little, um, from a technical perspective, uh, there's the privacy issue that is, is a huge, huge factor going forward. Uh, both Rogers and Bell are using equipment that actually filters through. It's not only being filtered on prime time times when they're doing the throttling and such. That equipment is still having the information flow through the entire day. So that's a pretty big issue going forward as well. Something to consider. that we should all realize is that most of our telecom networks were actually built on about close to a third of taxpayers' dollars. Uh, and as such, I think it's much closer to public infrastructure that we act, than we actually believe it is today. And, um, and I think we've, maybe one of the ideas that, you know, in, in going forward with more, um, but like you said, like uh, was mentioned earlier, in going forth with more competition is that um, both Rogers and Telecom One thing to consider um, that's been kind of hush-hush, but at the same time whispered around, um, has been the idea of structural separation, where you have uh, a very defined line between wholesale and a retail environments to get more of a background service provider that then has a global feel for whether it be cable or uh, internet over phone lines, and then that way that person is not biased to a certain entity that they belong to. So that may be one way to look at that. 